Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're ready now for a really fun tutorial on how to make my wallet or my deluxe wallet album. Now I did make a version of this a long, long time ago. It was one of my first videos and it was really, really popular. And there's been loads made and shared in uh, Paper Crafter with Paul on Facebook. People are still making it uh, even to the day. So I thought I'd revisit it because um, Into Craft uh, challenged me to make another project using just uh, one Stamperia pad. So they've given me the Sir Vagabond Aviator to work with. So I think it'll be quite nice to make this um, in this paper. So it's a quick opening up. Plenty of photo spaces, but there's a full tutorial, a full walkthrough video of this showing where everything goes. So this is what we're going to be making today. So in this first part, I'm going to be making uh, all the paper pages ready to go in. So that's all I need to do first is grab my chipboard. Now, I've already cut this, but if you're one who likes to have your measurements, if you join my Facebook group, Paper Crafting with Paul, you can download this PDF with all the measurements and all the score lines uh, written down ready for you. So I'll add a link below to that group so you can sign up and then just download and print this off or just keep it on your screen. Either way, but it's got all the score line, uh, all the measurements on it. So what I've got out of my chipboard, which is a 1.5 mil, by the way, is two pieces, eight and nine sixteenths. Now don't let the sixteenth scare you. Um, half a sixteenth, eight. So if it was eight sixteenths, that would be half an inch. So it's eight and a half by six and a quarter, really. Just with a little tiny hair breadth more. Okay, so you're just adding a little tiny more, which will just make it easier when you come to add your pages later on. So yeah, so if you want to do eight and a half and then just slide it on a little bit, that's what I've done. Same with the um, height. So it's going to go this way, so it's eight and nine sixteenths by six and five sixteenths. And we need, we've got two of those. Then we've got our two spines. So the first one is eight to nine sixteenths tall again, and this is by one and three eighths. Then this one needs to be one and three eighths plus whatever width grey board you're using. So you're just going to add that on. That'll just give you that little bit of extra leeway to come round and over the top. And then the front lid portion is eight to nine sixteenths again by two and a half. But before we build our cover, we need to do something with this. So this is obviously optional. You could just use your corner chomper and round the corners. But for this one, just to add a little bit of difference, we're gonna do some diagonal lines. And the diagonal lines are going to be one and a half inches from bottom corner in both directions. So it's one and a half inches that way. And then one and a half inches this way. And we're just gonna join them up. And this side as well, I'm gonna have to come this way. So it's one and a half inches in both directions from that corner. There we go. Sometimes my scissors can just cut it off. Yeah, because it's just a small piece. Rather than getting my trim and guillotine back out, it's a nice strong pair of scissors. We'll just cut those tiny corners. So there we go with our 
properly. So the order we want to place these now is a base piece, then our one and three eighths spine, then another of the base panels, then my one three eighths plus the width, plus W, and then my lid. Now the method to cover this now is totally personal choice for you. If you like to cover yours in cardstock, and sticking down, go for that. My preferred method is using the Tiger Tape from Cool Cats. I'll link this in the description below as well, because it is brilliant stuff. It's like a papery texture, so it's not glossy and shiny. So it's nice and easy to use. And if you see my videos before, you'll have seen me do this many times, but if not, that's all I do. I've got my tape now sticky side up, and I'm gonna place one of the short edges down the center. Just give it a little press. Then I'm gonna pull again, and I'm just gonna turn it over and place it down the middle, down one long edge, and then the second short edge. And I'm just going to trim it off. So now you'll see that the tape is still sticking up. So what I'm gonna do while I'm doing that is cut little V shapes towards the corner of my chipboard. So I'm just cutting out a little triangle like so. on every corner. So this side, and on this side. Make sure I'm moving my triangles as I go, otherwise they do stick to your scissors, and then they'll stick back onto the tape. So I've taken the notches out of all four sides. Now I'm gonna Take my fingers, I'm just gonna run it over the edge just to make sure it's adhered. Then just press my fingers together and just sort of work that edge nicely. And then just eventually just pressing it all down. So just take your time, rub it like this and you've got a nice flat edge. And the brilliant thing is if you do end up with a little crease in this, I'll show you what you do. So press it on, just gentle pinch, and then press it down. And I'll be quite lucky, I've got no visible creases. Oh, all right. Nope, no creasing. But if you have, it's not an issue. You're just going to grab your Teflon tool or your bone folder, and you're just going to iron them out. So that's the first piece done, that's my base. Then I'm just going to put a bit of tape over the edge of my spine. There we go. So just the top and bottom bit. Then we're moving on to our third piece, which is the base. And I'm just going to take a bit of tape, just shorter than the width of my chipboard. I'm just going to place it halfway up the tape. And then using my table, this is the sticky side up now. I'm just going to turn it over and flip it down. And on the other side as well. So just halfway up the tape, flip it over and press it down. This is number three. Then we're going on to our second spine. Remember this is the one with a plus W, so plus the extra width. And you can see I have written plus W on it. So I don't mix it up with that one. Oops. 
bit excessive with the tape here. And then we've got our flap. So the flap, we need to press tape on from the short edge around to the short edge. So again, just like I did with that first piece, I'm gonna put my tape down with the sticky side up, place it on the middle, and I'm just gonna roll it over, trim off the edge or the end. And again, I'm just going to notch down to each of those corners. Now I'm not doing a V-shape this time. I'm just cutting straight lines down to every corner. And now, same as before, we're just gonna pinch and you can see it'll start doing the next one for you. So there's those two. Now this is where you're probably more likely to get some creases and things. So don't panic too much. We'll just use our tool to iron it out. And then a long top edge. So pinching between my fingers and then pressing down. Let's get it all going. So there we have our lid piece, so our flap. So now we've got them all edged. I'm gonna bring my tape back in and I'm going to measure a piece about an inch above and an inch below the length I want to join. Let's move these three out of the way. Otherwise I'm gonna get in a muddle. So I'm placing it with the sticky side up and I'm gonna place this page just so it's catching down the center. And then, I find it easy if I do it this way, I'm gonna line up my spine onto that page. I'm holding it together, I'm gonna to lift it up and I'm gonna flip it over. And then when I open it, that'll give me a gap that is double the thickness of my chipboard without having to use any special tools. And then what I'm gonna do is just cover up that spine with some more tape. So that's gonna strengthen it and also finish off our um, cover nicely. And then just fold it and you've got a nice flexible hinge. And just in case of now, repeating that process until we've built our entire cover. So again, I find it easier to come this way. I'm just gonna place it on halfway up, bring on my next piece, which is a base. Line up the corners. Flip it over and press it down. Then just tease it apart and bring them over. I'll just cover those spines at the end. So we've got a bit of a crease there and the crease is gone. Next one. This time now we want the plus W. It's gonna be hard to get in camera shot because our cover is getting a bit long now. So I'm gonna flip it over and press it down. And 
And then the last one is the flap. Lining up the corners again, holding it in place, and flip over. So the whole cover is now in place, and it's just a case of hiding those joints. Finally, just burnish it all down. And tease them up. There we go. And that is your album cover done. We'll just be adding some magnets when we decorate it. Or if you've got other type of closures you want to use, of course, you can use those as well. So now that our cover is made, it's time now to grab our cardstock and our trimmer and we start cutting the pages. Okay, so ready now to start cutting the pages. So I've got my cardstock here and I've got my cardstock off to the left hand side. I like to work in a method where I take my cardstock, cut and place. And I'll explain why in a bit because when we come to assemble later, when we flip everything over, everything will be organized for us. So I've pulled out my cutting guide again and a pencil so I can mark what I've got. So we're here now in the cardstock. I've written down what piece it is, how many we need, what size, and where we're gonna score later on. Now there's one mistake, you only need one base. Okay. Oh no, we do need two bases, sorry. I was thinking of the page. Right, so base, so we're gonna do two of these at seven and three quarters by four and a quarter. And these are gonna lie side by side um, in our album. So when you put them side by side, you get your eight and a half across, which is why in the chipboard then we've added that little bit extra so that we can have less space. Otherwise, it just gets too tight and everything's rubbing against each other. So this is a base and this is a base. So I've written on them. And what I'm gonna do now, off to the right, you won't be able to see very much, but I'm putting my pages face down so that when I come to scoring, when I flip it around, the base pages will be the first thing I've got. Rather than going from cutting to scoring to cut to hang a scoring, we get all our cutting done in one go. So now this bit is the flap and I'm gonna need eight of them. So it's gonna take a little bit more time. And they are six and three quarters by four and a quarter. I'm gonna try and be clever and see if I can cut two at a time. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Six and three quarters by four. Four and a quarter. We're lucky today. It does seem to be cut in two at a time. So I've done four. Let's just write flap on the first one. I won't bother writing on an all eight because they're all the same size now. Again, six and three quarters. by four and a quarter. And these are our little flap books, which come down when we open our folio. 
and they'll be designed then so that a six by four photo will fit onto them nicely. All right, so those are my eight flaps. So you can tick as you go through. Page one, we only need one of these and I'm gonna cut the eight and a half first because it's not long enough to do it that way. So eight and a half by seven and three quarters. And this is page one. And I just turn it upside down. So the gate fold pages, we need two of these. So they're gonna be six and a quarter. Oh, I'll slide over, there we are. Six and a quarter by five and three eighths. So five, one, two, three. So it's just under this five and a quarter. Five and three eighths. So these are my gatefold ones. So it's right gate on those. Then on the back of the gatefold pages, oh no, on the front, we got two pouches. So these need to be seven and three quarters by three and three quarters. So I'm gonna do the seven and three quarters by three and three quarters. These are the pouches. Then each pouch has got a flap. I'm just wondering if I can take these out of some of the offcuts. I think I can. So six and a quarter by three and a half, is it? No, it's just not quite long enough. I'm gonna have to get another piece. Uh, three and a half. Double so three and a half is seven, so if I cut the seven first, I'll have a nice large piece there rather than cutting it smaller. Uh, six and a quarter. And three and a half. So these are the pouch flaps. Then some slider covers, six and a quarter by five and three quarters. So we can just get both of them out of that. Slider cover. So you see, that's all I'm doing is just working my way down my cutting list. Now we're going to get, you won't be able to see. Here we go. Slider A. We need two of these. Seven and three quarters. Uh, by four and three sixteenths. Now that sounds like a scary one, but what it is, is if we do it at four and a quarter, when you slide it in, let's see if I can find it quickly. When you're trying to slide it in, it won't fit, or it's gonna be very, very tight. So by taking off that one sixteenth, just a little hair's breadth, it'll just help it slide in a bit easier. So let's have a look. So four and a quarter is there. So I'm just gonna go back. So you can see it's just that tiny, tiny little bit, just one sixteenth. But it does make 
a big difference. Three. So these are my slider A. And then we've got slider B, which is seven and five eighths. So four eighths is half and an extra eighth. There you go. Cut that one at the wrong size. Let me see if I can rescue it from a piece of scrap. I haven't got one, so I'm just have to cut another one. So it's four and three eighths. Oh, sorry, three sixteenths by seven and five eighths. Seven, four, five eighths. There we are. And these were my, let me just double check, they're both the same size. Yep. Yeah. Slider B. And then we need four flaps then, which are going to be six and three quarters by four and three sixteenths again. So six and three quarters let's make sure I'm right this time. There we go. These are the flaps for my sliders. Do you know what? Those E's are still wrong with me, aren't they? I've got the original one was the right one, I think. Here we go. So follow the cutting guide, not that bit. But here we go. I'm making sure they're back to it. And then the last bit. Uh, or from the cutting guide. Let's see if I can get some of my scraps for this. We need some long flaps, eight and a half by one and seven eighths. So let's see if I can get it out of this. I can. One seven eighths by eight and a half. going to be no those are too thin oh i've got them here so eight and a half by one and seven eighths and these are the long And there we have all our cutting done. Now, just so that you know, there may be more cutting when I come to the decorating stage because this front page will really depend on what papers you're using. And you're gonna work this around the paper rather than a pouch size right now. So we'll, I'll show you how to make a pocket later, but the size of it and what you do on this page is pretty much up to you. Okay, but everything else, so that's the page. I'll show you everything else, the main construction, but you obviously you can add what you want then afterwards. So now that we've got all our pieces cut, it's time to grab our scoreboard and our scoring tool. So my scoring board is ready. All my cut pieces are here. I 
again. As I said, I've turned it over now. So that first one we cut, the base, if you can see I've written base on there, is now on the top. So I'm gonna place that off to the side. So hopefully now, as I go through my cutting guide, everything should be in the correct order. So on the cutting guide then, I've written down the scoring instructions. So I tell you which side to put on top and then score at, so let's have a look. Let me get that underneath there. So I've got my base and it says to put the seven and three quarters on the top and score at six and a quarter. And it should say six and a half. So I'll correct that in the guide. So six and a quarter and six and a half. Because I don't need to go backwards with my instructions. So let me just grab my pencil and remind myself I need to write the half back in there. So again, I'm going to put them off to the right hand side, flipping them over upside down. So when I come to do it, all these words will be faced up. So now I've got those eight flaps and six and three quarters on top, score at half. And then just flip it upside down, flip it upside down. trying to do it quickly because it is just the same measurement for every piece and we have got eight of them to get through here we go so flaps are done so now page one so can we take fold here because they're quite similar seven and three quarters on top yep seven and three quarters on top at half and one and a half and flip it over. Then the gatefold pages, we're gonna put the five and three eighths on top. I'm gonna to score it half and one and an eighth. Half and one and an eighth. Then the pouches to go on those, I want a half and three quarters of an inch on both the short and one long. So half and three quarters on a short, half and three quarters on a, oop, on a long, and half and three quarters on the other short. And we need to do that on both. So half and three quarters on both the short ones and one long. Now we're going on to the pouch flaps. So three and a half on top and half and three quarters again. Half, three quarters. Half and three quarters. Slider covers. Now these are with the five and three quarters on top. And we're gonna do half and three quarters. So half and three quarters on both sides. So I'm gonna rotate it and repeat. So the five and three quarters on top at half and three quarters, rotate, half and three quarters. So slider A is the seven and three quarters along the top. And we're gonna do it at one and a quarter and one and a half. So one and a quarter, one and a half. 
slider B, seven five eighths across the top, and one and a quarter, and one and three sixteenths. So it's just the next one over. So one and a quarter and three sixteenths. So it's just a thin little channel to allow space then for the flaps to fit in. And these then are going to be at half. And the last bits we've got are those long flaps, which are going to be at half and five eighths. Half and five eighths. It's just the next one over. So just a thin spine again. So there we have all our scoring done. We've actually now finished with our cutting guide as well. So I can put that off to the side. And as I said before, because I've been flipping everything, when I turn it around, everything now is back in order. And again, I put it off to my left. I'm going to grab a corner rounder, which is optional. But if you're going to do corners on your flaps, now is the best time to do it. It gets a bit awkward once it's constructed. So let's start with our um, base. So base has no tape, but we are going to use the largest, the 10 mil on my punch just to round off the top point so the flat uh, the score lines are there i'm cutting the short bits uh cutting on that flat bit which is going to be our pouch like that in fact why don't we do that while we go through So there's our flaps. Again, turning it upside down. Then the flaps, I've got a half inch score line. See there? Anywhere with the half inches, tends to be that's where my tape is gonna go. Now this has got eight, so I'm gonna go into some sort of production line. So each of these now will end up being a six and a quarter by four and a quarter page, which means when you add your six by four photo, you just have that little black border and it just fits perfectly on. So this part actually holds quite a lot of photos. Because, um, the 16 sides, but we cannot put them there, so but we lose the front because we'll be putting some uh, patterned paper on there. So six, yeah. So we're going to have room for sixteen photos just with these. So I'm just giving these a good burnish. I'm using the sharp end as well. I want a nice fold on these ones. And once that card stock has uh, relaxed a bit, I'll probably do it again when you watch me assemble everything. So I'm actually applying quite a bit of pressure onto this one because I need it folded back to 180 degrees. There we go. Here's my eight flaps. So now I've got that big page, which has got a bit of a hinge there, that half inch, which means I need to put some tape. Now, when I burnish this, I don't need to press quite as hard because it's only gonna be a 90 degree bend. Same with this one. So it's just a gentle fold like so. So that's page one. 
I'm gonna have to put it like that. So the two gatefold ones. Again, these are gonna be ninety degree bend, so I won't have to score them quite as hard. You've got a nice wide spine there. And now the pouches. So these are slightly different. So what I'm going to do, <coughs> excuse me, is we've got two score lines this time. Here's our half inch wide one. So we're going to put tape from the edge down to our first score line. Between these two score lines and again down to the score line on this one. So just to the score line. There's no need to take it any further because that's going to be cut off soon. And now it's time to do our deep pocket cuts. So what we're gonna do is you can cut at a 45 degree angle towards the first cross. Now, it depends now, you can just cut that square off or you can create a little tab which can tuck in. So to create a tab, so what I'm gonna do is inside that square, just cut a little flap can you see like so just within those score lines and then I'm going to cut up that score line and cut off at that 45 degree again so this flap will just neaten when we bring it together like so but if you cut it off I don't think it makes much of a difference so again we're going to do our cut and cut so you can cut off that square or make it into that little tiny tab shape okay. so I'll do the other one um, quickly so if you're gonna cut off you're just gonna go whoop, whoop, and up. so it's the much quicker version but if you want to do this, but without the cutting, the Cool Cats actually do a little die, which you can place on there and send for your die cutting machine. And it makes your quarter inch um, deep pockets. So there we go. And then each of those pouches, deep pouches needs a flap so everything doesn't fall out. So, and because it's a flap, I'm going to round off the corners. And each time I'm doing it on my cardstock, it's with my deep one. Now the slider covers have got a half inch on both sides. So there we go. Everything in this album pretty much comes with a pair because it's a very symmetrical album and burnish that tape down nicely and then just gently score these back to create that sort of U shape. Go and get the second one. There we 
we go. And now we've got our sliders. So there's no tape on the sliders. But they are we've got some flaps, so we're going to cut those top flaps. Sliders A. And slider B. Now slider B is a little trickier because that spine is so slim. So we're going to try and tease it over and that one's come nicely. So I'm not going to worry too much about burning it, burnishing it because it is so thin. There we go. Just get it nice and tidy. Just, I'm just sort of rolling it between my fingers just to get it visible. There we go. So there's my slider bees. And each of those sliders is going to be given a flap. So this now will need some strong burnishing to lie flat. Burnish, and this now needs a strong score. We want this to lie as flat as we can. There we go. And there's the four flaps, and the last ones are my long flaps. There we go. So I'm going to round them off on the long bit and then just roll over because it's the eighth. I'm not using my uh, scoring tool to do the fold. I'm just gently just hovering it over just a little bit. Oh, I forgot to have the tape. That would be quite useful. Again, the tape down this bit. Punch the two corners. And then just roll the other one. So I wasn't squeezing down to the floor, just rolling it over. And that is the last piece there. So now all our cardstock pieces are complete. Because we've been flipping them over, they are now in the order that we need. So now that everything's ready, we'll grab our cover and start assembling. Okay, to start assembling, it might be quite tricky because it's quite a long album. So sometimes parts of it might be out of shot, but I'll show you the important parts. Okay, so we're gonna open up our album like so. So we're gonna start on this bottom flap. And for this bottom flap, we're gonna be taking our two bases. In fact, I can put that aside for now. I'm gonna flip them over so our flaps are facing up and we're going to grab those eight photo mat flaps here and I'm going to take the tape off the back I find it easier to turn it around so I can see the corners and I'm using my fingers I don't want it touching there 
So I've got it lined up. And I'm just going to just slowly, tiny little hair's breadth, push it up just so that it's not catching into that score line. So you can see the score line is there, but my cardstock ends there. So then when it folds, they're not touching. And now I'm going to line up three more onto that. So I'm lining it up. Now I like, I tend to do this in the air so I can feel where they're all going and try and keep the sides nice and straight. So holding the sides, pressing down. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I, it is one more. And what we've done here now is created one of the little flip books, which I've shown you in the past. And you have got that spine. And if you're not liking the look of the spine, what you can do is take your tiger tape. Press it on the edge. And then just roll it over. And that'll just neaten up, just cut off the edge a bit, overlap there. It'll give you a nice finished edge there. But again, that's an optional bit. So again, this album is all about having pairs of things. So let's do the same. So we're taking it in. And then just moving it down slightly so it's not touching that score line. Let's take all the tape off these. It might be quick if I do it rather one at a time. So again, in the air, so we can line up these corners. And I'm using my uh, palms to keep everything in the line. And again, I'm just going to use my tape. To neaten up the edge. And just rolling it over. And we've got our two flip books made. So I'm just going to add some tape to the back of these because we can now attach them to our book. There we go. Bring in our book. Make sure this is now the inside. And I'm, how am I gonna get this in shot best that way? Making sure I'm hiding all these bits on the inside rather than on the outside. I'm gonna add some glue as well. We really want this stuck down because it is the chipboard. Some nice strong glue. And this is where, do you remember when we added that 16th? It's going to come into, into play here because it's going to give us just that little bit of extra so it's not touching that score line. So I'm lining it up to the bottom of my chipboard because you don't want anything to interfere here 
you've got that little gap between your chipboards which you want to keep clear you see that little channel in the tape or in your cardstock if you've covered it in cardstock and the extra 16th we've give, put this side will also mean I, I've got a little tiny tiny gap in between my books you're not going to see it but it's there just so things aren't going to rub against each other or overhang off the side and that's the bottom done. Now time to move on to the main piece. So now we've got page one. Now in my album, page one comes down like this. But there's nothing stopping you placing it, if you prefer it, this way so that it opens up. So this time, what we'll do is we'll do that. Now because it's gone onto the tape, <coughs> I'm just going to add a bit of glue as well. And you're trying to make it nice and straight down. So you're lining up the sides of your pages with the side of the album. And also, you're looking for that channel. Because what you don't want is that this is covering that channel. So I'm just going to bring my head over. And line it up. And press it down. So let me show you what I mean. You can see that channel is clearly visible now. I haven't taken my cardstock over it. So when the album closes, it's gonna lay on top rather than pushing it down. Sorry, it's gonna lay on top rather than, um, if it was in that gap, it would be squashing it. So that's page one. Then we open up page one. I have to move things from behind. And we've now got our gatefold pages. So I'm going to take off the tape. I'm going to add some glue again. And this now is going to go from that score line. Make sure you're not touching it. Otherwise, you're going to have these pages trying to fight with each other. So I'm going to bring it down just a tiny bit so that little hair's breadth of that 16th is coming in useful again. So I'm not covering my channel, but I'm also not touching the score line on the top. So when it closes, it's going to be a nice finish. Again, now we're going to do it the other side. Just have to move it so I can see. There we go. I think that's worked nicely. I'm just going to bring my Teflon tool just to make sure everything now is burnished down. So that is then your gatefold pages in the center. Now, if you want to, to mite just these beforehand to reduce the bulk, you can, but I don't think it really matters with this. Now, one thing I haven't done, I haven't scored or folded those score lines for my pouches. So I'm just going to do it quickly. There we go. I'm going to take off the tape from the long one. And I'm going to turn my folio this way. So the open end of your pouch is working out of your folio. So the gluey bit goes into the middle. So I'm just going to line this up straight onto the page. There we go. And uh, now I can take off two sides and I'm working in the air I just find it a bit easier because we've got nothing to press down against because of this extra spine so I'm just 
tweaking it so it's in line. So this is a nice deep quarter of an inch pouch we've got here. So it's gonna hold quite a few photos. Now this one, if you remember, I did have a tab. So if you've kept your tabs on, just blob a little bit of glue and that will just hold them inside later on. There we go. So I'm going to turn my folio around. Tuck those tabs inside. And then... Taking off the two short sides. Lining those up and lining those up. So what you've got is these two deep pouches sort of meeting in the center. Now at the moment they're a bit wobbly and falling because there's nothing on the other side. But once we come to fill in the other, that'll be a nice closure there. So as we said, they need some flaps. I thought I went through the pages quite quick. I didn't fold these ones either. Now these are going to go just on the edge here. So I'm just getting my uh, fingers underneath here so I can press onto my finger and flip it over. We've got another flap. Finish these. And just lining up on the edge. So you can see the side is building up quite nicely there. So when the folio is shut, you've got a nice finish on the outside there. So you open it up. You open your page and you've got these two deep pouches here. So we'll just press these down. There we are. So we're going to open them up and our sliders are going to go here. So let's just move it out for a second. So our sliders are just literally going to go on like that. They're just going to place. But what I'm going to try and do is try and get them out as much as I can so that they slide nicely onto uh, with our sliders inside so i'm going to start with the outside and i'm going to line it up with that deep pouch turn it around and what i'm going to make sure now is that i'm coming just inside that score line i don't want to be touching this score line otherwise it's not going to fold I'm just bringing it so I can see our score line is still visible. It's caught. I think, yeah, I think I'm okay there. Actually, it's just a little bit too close. Let me just see if I can just bring it. There we go. So you want it to fold nicely, like so. Yep. And as we've done before, we've got a second one to do. So the first side, so I'm taking off one piece of the tape so I can line it up to the edge here. Press it down. And I'm just gonna bring it around this way so I can see it a bit easier. Believe in me, this is so much easier when you're not trying to get things in shot. Just making sure I'm within that score line. There we are. 
So we have our two sliders. So in this side, we're going to have a slider A. These have got the wider spines, so they go on the top. And then slider Bs come in the bottom. I just put the wider ones on top because when you hold your album, it'll just finish it off neatly on the top. Doesn't really matter. But what we're going to do, so we've got some extra photo mats. Again, we're going to add an extra flap onto each one of these. So just line it up, folding it down. So this is an A. Slide my A in and your B will then slide on top. There we go. So this is my A. And these are ready-made photo mats, four six by four photos. So we won't need to do anything else with them. And my final B. Nope. That'll go on top. So you can see why we had to come in that one little one sixteenth there, so everything sort of slides in. If it was exactly the same size, we'd have a bit of trouble. And the last bit, I'm going to add some glue to this because it's so long. Is our large flaps, which are just going to keep everything in place in our central bit. So again. I'm lining it up between those two score lines and not quite touching the score line of that page. Otherwise, we are going to impede the way it folds shut. And again here, I want to keep that channel visible. And here we go. So then we just tie that shut, then our sliders will close, our pouches will close, we'll have a page tightening everything in, then our flaps will close, and we'll have some magnets later on to keep it all nice and tidy. And there you go, that is your deluxe wallet album, all, construct all constructed. So we're going to, in the next part, use our one pad uh, of stamped paper. In this case, we're going to use the Survag Bond one, uh, or the Survag Bond Aviator one, because there are three different Survag Bonds so far. The Survag Bond in Japan and it now Aviator. So why not head over to Intercraft? Have a look through the pads they're stocking. Really great prices. And if you fancy adding some more embellishments, they stock the die cuts and the collectibles and things like that. So you can really go to town with the decorating later on. And so thanks for watching. If you're gonna have a go, please give it a thumbs up and a comment below, really means a lot. And hit that subscribe button so you'll know when future videos go up to get some more inspiration. And if you haven't done so yet, head over to Paper Crafting with Paul on Facebook, link below so you can get your cutting guide and also see more inspiration. So see you all again soon.